at one point I had all these strippers sitting there with the Centurion card and they were listening to me talk, thinking that I'm going to like take them on a jet somewhere where I don't have a jet or anything like that. But it, they, they think all these things because there's so much build up to the Centurion card. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. And today we have a very special guest. This is a black cards insider story and it wouldn't be right if we didn't have a genuine American Express black card holder with us on the show to tell us all sorts of crazy insider stories. And today we have Simon Katz. Welcome to the show, Simon. Thank you so much for having me. I'm a fan first and foremost. Excited to be on the show. Now you've had, uh, you've had a couple of viral videos actually on the Amex black card on YouTube. Why don't you tell us about that and then we'll get into how you got the card and some cool insider secrets sure sure yeah i've had a few good videos people seem to be interested it's like a, a credit card that's secretive and hard to get and i decided to put out a video during the pandemic it actually took off the video wasn't really well edited it was my first one but it did well and and i've been making um centurion credit card videos ever since why don't you start by telling us how you actually became a member because it's a little secret of the centurion no one really knows the exact requirements but uh yeah share with us your story absolutely absolutely so when um i always had a love for credit cards i always felt it was a way to financially uh show that you're successful or it was a way to show a status and um my goal was always to get the centurion card it was um you know i'm a self-made entrepreneur i didn't grow up with money uh, my father's a tailor and so forth and I really wanted the black card and people kept saying, you can't get it. You know, it's, it's only for the celebrities. It's only for um, the high net worth individuals and so forth. So I made it a goal and I worked my way up. I got the Amex blue cards for years and then the Amex gold and then the platinum. And finally I was able to uh, spend enough money. And at that time, this was almost a decade ago, uh, I was able to spend enough money, or it was about 250000 to request an application. Now, many people think you have to be invited for it. And technically, yes, you can, you do have to be invited, but you could also request to be reviewed. Um, and I would just, you know, I would just constantly reach out to them every like month and say, Hey, do I qualify? Do I qualify? Do I qualify? And every month I would get rejected. And this probably happened for a year until one month they said, yes, you do. And I did the application. There was no interview at that time. And I believe there's still no interview today because I was able to recommend several members into the Centurion program. And I actually think if you qualify financially, it's better to uh, be recommended into the program then just apply yourself because there's so many people applying but i was finally able to get approved this was a decade ago when i got accepted the initiation fee was five thousand dollars or the one-time membership fee and the yearly fee was two thousand five hundred and the additional card fee was only fifteen hundred dollars now it's now ten thousand yeah yeah it was yeah. cheap so my wife had one uh cheap in relative sense to yeah, what right. it is today right um my wife had one um i got her a second member card i had one and then you know as a recent and you reported on it probably they raised the fee to ten thousand dollars one time and five thousand dollars a year plus five thousand dollars for every member and i felt that for me to pay $10,000 a year to have a credit card just so my wife and I have it, it was not necessary. So she, unfortunately, she got hers canceled. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, had to chop her, I had to chop her off. I had to, although she remembers my numbers by heart and spends, you know, without it. And you can, you can still bring us a guest in the Centurion Lounge anyway, right? I can. One perk of the Centurion Lounge as a Centurion member with the airports getting packed again, you don't have to wait in line to get into the Centurion Lounge. That is a big benefit because we're always late. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, we and then they reserve a seat for you. That's the wow. other perk. I, I heard they also will crack out the expensive champagne for Centurion members. Is that true? They do, but there's a funny thing about that. So you're only able to get, first of all, the Centurion member has to go get it. You have to present the card and you could only get 
two glasses at one time. Um, And in the first serving, they'll bring it to you, but they really expect a tip. Here at SFO, they'll tell you they want a tip. So they'll say, you're tipping me, right? And you'll go, yeah, of course. You know, (laughs) at other airports, I don't think they do that, but um, at SFO, they do. And you get a a woove. uh, So it's a a really nice champagne. And I usually get pretty loaded up uh, enough to relax on the airplane. (laughs) So guys, if this interests you and you are into making money, doing business, maybe one day getting the Amex insured, you got to build your wealth, right? And a great way of doing that is investing. And that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, which is Masterworks. During this period of high inflation, oh my goodness, you see how expensive that is? Uncertain monetary policy, overpriced real estate, and quickly falling stock prices, it's more important than ever to consider diversifying across asset classes. One asset class that you've probably never considered is investing in fine art. Did you know that contemporary art pieces outpace the S&P 500 total return by 164% from 1995 to 2021, and thus way outpaced inflation too over that period? This opportunity used to be limited to billionaires who could afford paintings costing tens of millions of dollars, like this guy who spent 170 million on his Amex black card for this painting. But now you don't need a black card because through Masterworks platform, you can buy fractional shares in paintings by artists such as Banksy, Andy Warhol, and Picasso. The team at Masterworks have over 75 years of art market experience and they know what they are doing when it comes to buying and selling art. They've sold over three paintings so far, each returning over 30% net IRR to investors. If you don't want to wait until Masterworks finds a buyer for a painting, they have a secondary market too, where you can trade shares in Masterworks owned paintings with other investors. With stock market returns unsure for the foreseeable future, it's a great time to diversify your portfolio into art, and now you can, thanks to Masterworks. So join over 400,000 people who've already signed up and start investing like the billionaires do. Check out Masterworks with my link below. So that's how you got the card, a little bit about it, about the Centurion Lounge and stuff. What are some of the kind of react, let's say, yeah, let's start with the reactions people have. What, What are some of the reactions people have when they see you using it? Okay, so remember, I've been a member for a long time. I told you over a decade, uh, I think member since 05, and I had the Centurion in 2010 or 2012, around that time. Um, First, when Centurion came out with their metal credit card, uh, they had, um, it, they had, it had some heft to it. There wasn't many credit cards that had that metal feel or heft. And I think Amex was the first to, to introduce that, that I'm aware of. So people used to go, oh my God, this is nice. Uh, it's heavy. They would say, wow, this is a heavy card. And I would reply, you know, at Starbucks, like, hey, heavy card, heavy bill that comes in at the end of the month, just to joke around. There was a lot of reaction from it and people were excited to feel it. They would tap it, they would hit it. I've had people drop it by accident and it would have that metal sound that go, oh my God, you know? Um, So it was really nice. And then the Chase Sapphire Reserve came out, I believe afterwards, and it also had some heft to it. And that kind of diluted that reaction of people going, oh wow, you have this really heavy card, what is this about? I would get a lot of people know what the card is if you're shopping at a high-end place. So if you go to Louis Vuitton or um, you know a Rolex store or any of these like really high-end places, which I have some videos on, um, you get attention. They know that you can spend the money or you will spend the money. If yeah. you go to like a Starbucks nowadays, like I did back in the day, they don't even care. And with like this whole thing where people aren't touching your credit card anymore and you're tapping, you get unnoticed. Yeah. So um, what was one of the funniest experiences you've had with the card? Oh, so, you know, uh, I've had pretty interesting experiences with the Centurion. I would say when I was younger and before I was married and I would go out with groups of people, the funniest experiences would be at strip clubs with the Centurion card. I'm not a big strip club guy. I don't you know, it's not my favorite thing to go. There are people that love it and I'm not one of those people. Um, But when we would travel for a bachelor party or a trip to Vegas, the Centurion card would get you in the door because a lot of the bouncers and a lot of the people that work at those clubs, 
they they listen to rap music and they listen to you know Jay Z talking or, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. And you'd say, hey, I'm a Centurion member. I got the black card center. They would get you and they would get you seated because they think you're gonna buy a world yeah. of champagne for all the ladies, you know. And um, <laughs> I would be more on the frugal side because it's not my thing. I don't care to pop bottles and show off to someone else, etc. And then blow you know thousands of dollars. Um, so I would flash it a few times to the strippers and say, and I'd make up a funny story because I, 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 you know, I don't have anything interesting, but say, yeah, you know, me and Lil Wayne were like partying and we have this, and, and they, at one point I had all these strippers sitting there with the Centurion card and they were listening to me talk, thinking that I'm going to like take them on a jet somewhere where I don't have a jet or anything like that. But it, they, they think all these things because they are so much build up to the centurion card yeah that you're some type of world traveler or baller or, or you're just spending money recklessly that that's what they think it's all about when in fact most of centurion members according to amex centurion and i have a great team thank you amex um a lot of them are business people so a lot of people are on the back end and not as many celebrities as you would think so I know that the Centurion kind of prides itself on its concierge and like being able to get hard to get items and things like that. Have you ever used the concierge and you have any experiences with that? Okay, so there's a couple of things. Uh, in London or in Paris, my wife and I traveled. Very hard to get in a restaurant. Um, uh, I forgot the name. I apologize. If I do, I'll, I'll email you or something. But there was like where David Beckham went and a lot of high-end celebrities and we were not able to get in. So we called Centurion and they got us in uh, because they have some type of relationship. And it was like a last minute reservation. They're usually three months out, wow. um, you know, and, and the same thing happened in Napa at French Laundry. It's a very popular restaurant, Napa uh -huh. Valley. Yeah. Um, probably I think top 10 restaurant in the world or something like that. And uh, last minute, we were able to get in. Amex has a good relationship. Um, there was a nightclub one time. We really wanted to get into this nightclub, and we were not able to get in. And I flashed and the Centurion cards, again, to the bouncers. These guys seem to know more about these cards than anybody else. And we were able to get in, and you know, we were able to party that night while we were in London. Um, so awesome. overall, you could use it for certain things in certain restaurants, but there's a lot of times where it just doesn't work. I had a thing where I was going to put it on the internet and say, hey, I'm going to go to Centurion and ask for three exotic Rolex watches that I really want. And although I have a great you know, relationship with my Rolex dealers and I'm a collector and there's some videos on my channel you guys can check out, but um, they were not able to get them. In fact, they would email back and forth saying they can't connect. There's a waiting list. They have no power. Um, they can't force a Rolex dealer to do it. They have no direct relationship with a Rolex company or a Patek company. So is Centurion going to get you like something that everybody else wants and is waiting in line for? Probably not in reality. But if they have a relationship with a restaurant or if you're going to a strip club, it looks like you're going to have a good time uh, getting in or a nightclub, et cetera, because they just think you're going to blow money and you're going to want to show off. And you've already showed off by showing them the card. So half of it seems like maybe for some of the things you don't even need to phone the concierge, you just flash the card, right? Yeah, for some of those <laughs> things, absolutely, you don't need the concierge. Do you feel like obliged to spend a lot of money then? Order the most expensive thing on the menu because they've done that for you. You feel a little bit obliged to spend, but let, let me tell you, you guys that want the Centurion need to understand there's a thing that comes with that and people will expect you to spend money. Yeah. Personally, I don't care to oblige in that regard, I'll do what I can afford and also what I feel is necessary at the moment. Uh, with the Centurion card, you never want to be behind on a bill. Like my highest mm. bill was, I think, $90,000 some years back. And to be honest with you, I was freaking out about that bill, <laughs> you know, and, and what was that? Uh, what was that for? Oh, man. Was that a just, sing uh, single uh, purchase or was that large? No, not. A whole so that's a good question. So that was a, a, a vacation. I think we went to St. Bart's or uh, traveled. 
I purchased a Rolex on that trip or some high-end watch. Uh, I bought my wife's stuff on that trip. So it adds up and it really adds up fairly quick with the Centurion because you're feeling in the moment. And these stores, they get you boozed up, they'll give you champagne and so forth. And they'll want you to spend money uh, knowing that you could do that. And, and that's kind of the way they operate. Uh, my single biggest purchase, I think I have a video on that, although I had a bigger purchase than that since, um, it was a Rolex watch. Um, so before the first one that I did a video on, it was a gold Rolex. I think I spent $35,000 on a single purchase, which is not crazy, you know, in relative mm. to some people making money. Um, and then I topped that, I think, with like a $50,000 Rolex purchase recently. Uh, but, you know, on there, there are people that have bought something for like $190 million, a piece of art on yeah. their Amex. I know that shirt. story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so I'm not, um, you know, when I come on and I talk about the Centurion, I'm not the richest guy or the biggest baller. Um, you know, I think people need to have the cliche of Centurion and understand that most of the people that have it are probably hardworking people that have businesses. And they're not somebody that's a Dubai, you know, uh, um, a chic or an oligarch from Russia or something. That's rare, right? But there are those people that are going to buy a yacht with it or are going to go ahead and, you know, spend uh, $400,000 and buy a Lamborghini right away. In fact, one story I read, there was a guy that in his points bought a Lamborghini. Wow. So you could That's imagine crazy. how many points this guy had to just buy a car like that. You know, it's pretty crazy. Why don't you talk a little bit about, because I know when we talked the other day, uh, you talked about the value that you get out of it. And what, what is the most valuable thing that the black card gives you? So why don't you talk a little bit about that? The one thing that I love about the Centurion card is you feel like you're part of a, a mem like a group of individuals that are successful, that network that are together that it's almost like a, a ypo for business which is a like an entrepreneurial group that has the highest level of entrepreneurs around the world and you network with these individuals and i think centurion's been trying to do that with their centurion events where you meet other centurion members and that is a group that you're a part of that is distinct from any platinum member or anything else so i feel like the biggest gain is networking with individuals of that caliber or level as well. People that have hit me up on Instagram that are like, hey, can you help me get the Centurion card? One of them I got a card for is a successful business guy, uh, has a marketing company. And then what really intrigued me about him is he opened like an exotic car club that seems to be getting bigger and bigger. So I said, hey, uh, let me come out. He's like, be, you'll be my guest one day. And he introduced me to his Rolex dealer. And now I'm supposed to go meet up with this Rolex awesome. guy. So it's like a, it's a networking yeah. thing that you don't get, um, you know, with platinum, in my opinion, just because there's so many platinum members and that for the fee, if you could afford it, I think it's worth it because you're just going to mingle with people that are successful. And, you know, the, the saying is, uh, show me who your friends are. I'll show you kind of who you are or something of that line. Um, you know, you're going to hang around successful people. You're going to want to level up at all times and try to get to that next level. You hang around with, um, you know, uh, low lives and deadbeats. You're going to do something bad that's going to get you in trouble. Yeah, me too. Um, I've totally found that. And I think that's a great point uh, kind of to end on, to end the video on. Um, you know, if you want to be successful in life, whether that's getting the Amex Centurion or whether that's getting the business, I, get it, I guess getting the Centurion really is sort of a side thing because the main thing is building your business and being an entrepreneur, isn't it? It's just that's a sort of little reward along the way. Um, but yeah, cut out the negative people, guys. Just focus on the positive. Uh, make friends with people who are more successful than you and they'll bring you up, right? Rather yeah. than other people pulling you down. Uh, so if you guys want to see more of Simon, you can check out his channel. I'll put all the links to his YouTube and his Instagram uh, below for you guys to check out. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Simon. I really appreciate it. Ben, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I hope any uh, questions that your followers ask, I can reply as well. If they want to know more, they can reach out to me. I'm pretty responsive, but truly appreciate the opportunity. Love your channel. Keep doing your thing. And uh, 
really happy to meet you. And I think in the future we can maybe do more videos if, if this one takes off or as well for yeah, your man. following. Cool. Thank Thanks you. a lot. And Thank I'm going to start working on my Centurion application. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got you. You let me know. <laughs> I'll connect you with the people. One hand washes the other. Once the spending's high enough, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All we'll, right. We'll figure this out, man. We'll figure <laughs> that part out. Don't worry. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Thank See you, ya. man. Appreciate it.